Hey, this is Rob with Ren and Rob Cook again. And this time we're gonna take a page from Cooking Joe Foods YouTube and try our hand at making a sourdough rustic loaf 100% on the Weber smoke fire and using a baking steel as well as a Dutch oven. So I'm gonna start by making our Levain. And the Levain is pretty much an offshoot of your wild sourdough starter instead of using commercial yeast. <laughs> And there's a lot of benefits which we'll get to but first I just microwave some water for about 15 seconds add that to your mature sourdough starter add a little bit of bread flour and all-purpose flour and just for full disclosure I'm pretty new to this I've only been maintaining a starter for about a year and a half but uh, I really find it fun exact measurements will be in our description So once that's all incorporated, you kind of want to mix it by hand. That lets you get familiar with the feel of how things should be when you're baking. Once you've got that really mixed together and incorporated, you'll see that it's already starting to form. You want to add that to the oven. And because my house was a little cold, I've turned on the oven light to kind of keep a pretty good ambient temperature for 75 degrees Fahrenheit. While your levain is rising, you want to start to put your flour together. About a thousand total grams of flour. I use majority of King Arthur bread flour because it has high protein content. A little bit of all-purpose flour, some spelt flour if you have it, and then some whole wheat flour to add some grains and flavor. After that, measure out your Levain. You'll have some extra that you can do some things with. About 600 grams of water. And as you can tell, this container wasn't big enough, so I had to switch over to the quart container. By the way, I highly recommend these. You can reuse them forever. You can microwave them, freeze them, and use them as instead of Tupperware for bringing your lunch to work. They're also stackable in your fridge, so can't recommend them enough. I'll put a link in my description. Add the water directly to your mature Levain. I like to do that because it just starts to spread the starter out a little bit more and just makes it easier to incorporate once you start to add the dry flour. So get your hands in there again and mix it. Try to get it evenly dispersed throughout the water. And then, you know, just add a quarter at a time your flour mixture. And again, just continue to use your hands. Once it starts to come together, add more flour. I've used only about 75% of the total water that I'm going to use in this recipe. If it starts to feel a little dry, feel free to add a little bit more water, but make sure you reserve you know, anywhere from 10 to 20 grams of water when you add your salt later in the process. that all kneaded up and once it starts to pull away from the sides of the bowl I like to shape it into a ball and then cover it with some plastic wrap or towel and just let that rest for a little bit so the water uh, is able to fully hydrate the dough after that move it over to a clean bowl and then cover for another 30 minutes As you can see, it starts to look fully hydrated. Now I'm measuring out my salt, which is about 2% of the total weight of the flour that you've added. So in this case, 1,000 grams of flour, 20 grams of salt. And I prefer diamond crystal. It feels better in the hand to be able to spread and probably evenly seasons the dough better. Add the remaining water with your salt and just Kind of try not to tear your dough but try to incorporate it by pinching it and squeezing it you don't want to tear it because you're building the gluten mm. 
once it's all incorporated, it has absorbed the salt water, then you want to do your first set of folds. I like to just moisten up my hands a little. You're going to do one side. I like to just pick it up and kind of let it fold onto itself. Do the opposite side and then do the remaining two sides after that. And then do the remaining two sides after that. Once you get that done, cover it and you want to repeat that every 30 minutes for two hours. You'll see that it starts to come together more and more and strengthen each time you do it. it starts to get a smoother exterior every 30 minutes you check on it. And when you fold it, it just helps reinforce that. You start to see some bubbles and that shows you that your dough is getting stronger. Here's my last fold and as you can tell it's really smooth at this point and pretty strong. Once you get to this point you start to see some bubbles on the exterior again and it looks really smooth and let it rise at room temperature for five hours or what they call bulk ferment. And you should be able to do the window pane test like this. Oil up your hands and give it a try. If it doesn't rip that's a pretty good sign that your dough is strong enough to you know, give you a good crumb, which is the holes in your bread. After it's fully rested and it's strong enough, you might need to go more than five hours less. Uh, depends on the ambient temperature when you're at home. Dump it onto a table and then divide it in half. With my dough, you can see that I poured it so it, uh, it was upside down. So I flip over each side and then just kind of pre-shape it using a scraper and just kind of roll it toward you so it forms somewhat of a ball that's called pre-shaping. Let that rest for about 30 minutes under a towel so it doesn't dry out. And then now I'm doing the full shaping. Here's an example of how I like to do it. Kind of form it like an envelope on the sides. You can do the bottom first and then the sides but kind of wrap it like a baby and then bring the top all the way over. Everyone does it differently. Again, I'm still an amateur, so this is just the way I do it. Once it's kind of rolled, it should feel pretty airy. I like to gently turn it over and lay it in a banneton. After you've added it to the basket, um, I like to put it in a plastic bag because you're gonna have this in your refrigerator overnight or what they call cold ferment. And the dough will rise a little bit, so you wanna add some air to it before you wrap it up. That prevents it from touching the top of the bag and it allows it to rise and proof. So the next morning, unwrap your dough. I like to let it proof while I get the grill started. I'm setting the Weber smoke fire to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Checking my pellets to make sure I got enough to go because it's going to be blasting at pretty high heat. Add my baking still to the grate, and yes I did pinch myself a little bit. And add your Dutch oven and let that get all heated up together. The baking steel helps the Dutch oven stay at temp. After it's fully heated, let that chill for a little bit. I'm adding a grate probe to check the temperature of the grate. Once it reaches temp, go ahead and uh, move your Dutch oven off of your baking steel and place the bread seam side down. Remove any excess flour as much as possible and score it however you like. I wasn't thinking here and just did an X. <laughs> I usually do the square type of score as you get more crustage. Once you got that done, immediately put the Dutch oven over it. I put it upside down. I did notice a little bit of a discrepancy on the probe here. As you can tell, the probe was a lot hotter than uh, what my grill was reading. Probably because it was really close to the baking steel. After 20 minutes, you've done the initial rise. Go ahead and take it off the baking steel because it's going to be probably overly hot. Put it directly on the grate to continue smoking for another 20 or so minutes until the internal temperature reaches about 210 to 211 degrees internally. Once that's done, go ahead and check on it 
and pull it. It'll be steaming hot, so be careful. And the results are pretty amazing, actually. Didn't think it would turn out this great, to be honest. Bottom is a little burnt, but that's a little bit of added flavor. A little bit bitter, but still it looks pretty great. It rose pretty well, as you can see the split opened up, and that sound is perfect. Kind of want that hollow sound that indicates a pretty well fluffy bread with a crusty exterior and a fluffy interior. The crumb is not that open, but it's not bad. It's pretty decent, and I kind of like it this way anyway, since you can eat it as is or even use it for a sandwich. Don't have any of the stuffings falling out. But a lot of people who make bread recommend that you rest it a day so all the moisture can work its way to the crust, but I think after an hour of resting, it's perfect. Still warm, add a little bit of softened butter, Malden salt if you have it. In this case, I use smoked salt to kind of bring out the smokiness and some fresh cracked pepper. That to me is heaven. And I think I'll take another bite. Listen to the sound of that crunch. Oh well, who am I kidding? I'm just gonna eat this thing. And here's the obligatory eating shot demonstrating how good this thing is. It's crusty, it's nutty, salty, peppery. A hint of smokiness. The smoke comes more through with the aroma than it does with the actual flavor, but man, this turned out pretty decent. It turned out just as good as if I did it in my oven. Maybe with the exception of the burnt base. But there's ways to fix that, like adding an oven pan on the second part of the cook. So while I butter up another slice for myself, if you like the video, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we'll continue posting some video recipes for you. Hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching.